Good morning. Oh, I'm already a little bit breathless because I've been walking through the dune lands, which is um, part of the fin, part of Fintorn. And the dune lands are just, they're just another landscape altogether and they're so incredibly beautiful. I've always loved walking through here. Um, probably don't do it enough actually, so it's funny, last night I was trying to figure out where to go walking today and uh, when I thought of this place I was like, yeah, that's the one. So here I am sharing a little bit of the dune lands of Findhorn with you and you can see that it is a very, well it's windy so I hope that's not messing too much with the microphone. We have kind of like sullen clouds over there, but we can see the sun is going to break through at some point. It's definitely not cold. There's a wind, but it's probably sitting at about 16 degrees, maybe. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm really warm. I brought everything for cold because coming down to the sea, it's usually pretty chilly down here just with the wind coming off the sea but it must be a southerly wind because it's warm and this is our very very beautiful backyard accessible to us any time of night and day we just have to take a short drive of about I don't know maybe three miles and here it is And it's an interesting landscape. And there are people who actually would be able to tell you all about it. I'm not one of those people. But there are people here who are very, very um, passionate and engaged with the land and the ecology and the natural environment. And they know the names of everything. And they know about the heathers and the lichens and the grasses and the trees. And I'm so grateful that there are people who are so passionate about our natural world. I've spent many years not being fully engaged or engaged in that way because my particular area of purpose is people. But these days I am getting out, as you know, for walks regularly now and deepening an appreciation of what this is like being out here. And just, uh, yeah, just being. This really is the word. So much of our life is spent doing living up to an expectation placed on us by something, whether that be a system, an ideology, whether it be religion, education, government, etc. And it's very, very difficult, incredibly difficult to discover yourself. We are, we have been created through decades of life conditioning. And um, coming to know oneself is a, <laughs> it's a painful journey. It is deeply rewarding, ultimately healing. It brings you to wholeness. And people are looking for that for the most part. Um, when Colin and I were pastoring as Christian ministers, that really was the cry of most people, was to be healed and whole. And religion seems to offer that. Because that's the message that we preached. It's the message that is often preached. And yet, it seems that many people, if not most, don't achieve that. Because we all, yeah people continue to hold their mindsets, their pain, their trauma, and they take this into all their relationships and their interactions in society. 
and uh, there's a scripture somewhere in the Bible that talks about out of the heart the mouth speaks and uh, it's the words that come out of your mouth that expose what is actually held in the heart and um, I find that a fascinating thing you know it's it's a gift it's a gift when you hear yourself um, it, it's a problem if you can't hear it and you can't accept it and you can't then stop and say hmm where did that come from so if you can start to explore the reasons why you can start to move towards wholeness and healing I think <laughs> I think what I think is not important <laughs> oh. yesterday I attended a memorial for a friend of mine who passed away recently she had only just turned 50 in March she'd been diagnosed with breast cancer in 2018 and it uh, went into her bloodstream and she developed a lymphoma and um, I remember the first time I met her which was a couple of years ago she was telling me about a treatment that was on offer to her a stem cell treatment I believe and she told me about the hectic journey honestly harrowing <laughs> journey that that would be because they had to give her multiple rounds of chemo or something and what have you anyway I remember asking her was that a journey she was really prepared to take and she said yes she she was young she wanted to live so that was great so she could face this with uh, the right attitude energy hope and she did she was amazing um, she was a real inspiration in the way that she dealt with her daily reality and that's not to say it was easy because those of us who know her me um, so slightly but others who knew her far far better deep friendships over many years shared at the memorial yesterday about her incredible strength of character her ability to be absolutely at peace with everything that was happening even if it wasn't according to her wishes and uh, that was a deeply moving and very beautiful memorial yesterday we sat around an open fire and people shared and um, because she passed away you know all her hopes all of uh, the plans weren't realized but she didn't give up and she didn't give in but she was at peace in acceptance quite powerful um, she called me on the Thursday she she we were supposed to meet um, in my role as uh, in the job that I do and I was going to meet with her and we were going to discuss how we could support her because she needed help in her home she was she lived alone and uh, she contacted me that day that we were meeting and said she had to go back to hospital because something was wrong with her blood test and so we, we didn't meet and we fully expected she would be able to come home but she never did that was where she stayed until she passed away a couple of weeks or so after that but on the Thursday before she died I saw her name come up on my phone and it was about half past seven at night Colin and I were sitting in the Abbey Inn we'd gone for a walk and we decided to stop in the we pub and have I had a half pint of Guinness Colin had his pint of Guinness and it was a lovely evening I saw her name pop up and I thought oh, oh bugger <laughs> because getting a call from her at that time of night meant something wasn't quite right and it wasn't and she told me that the decision had been made to withdraw all treatment that there was nothing that could be done and that the plan was now to try and get her down to her parents 
in England and um, into a hospice so that she could spend her last days with her family. So that was, yeah, it was shocking. I was very touched and honoured that she would consider calling me to let me know. She called a lot of people, she let a lot of people know and she maintained contact with friends right up until just the night. I mean, we're talking about, I don't know, 10, sometime between 10 and 12 o'clock on the night before she died. She died the next morning. She was sending WhatsApp messages and love hearts to people that she really was close to. And then sometime in the Sunday morning, she fell asleep forever. Well, the body fell asleep. We know that her spirit, her energy, her essence is now set free from her body, which kept her, yeah, encased in, in, in a diseased state. And that no longer exists. And that was the same for my dad. My dad had been just, oh, spent years in the prison of his body that kept deteriorating. And inside, he wasn't, you know, in his spirit and his vital force. But he was totally ready when it was his time. And so it was beautiful. Yeah, and it was a privilege to be there. So I think what I'm trying to say is, once again, I ramble and perambulate on another terrain, is that... It's an inevitability for all of us. It's just the method and the process is going to be different for each of us. But we can actually do it well. I've seen it done well. And uh, I think if we live life constantly keeping short accounts with people, you know, don't hold a grudge, don't hold on to anger, don't, yeah, you know, take, a, take account, take responsibility for your actions, your words, your deeds, you know, the things that affect people around you. And, uh, and I'm not saying avoid conflict, because I think conflict is essential, um, because it's what actually causes us to come face to face with ourselves. So we need it. Many of us can't stand it and will protect ourselves from it for various reasons and legitimate reasons. Fear, pain, fear of pain, fear of reopening traumatic things from the past. But if we receive it all as a gift, if we accept it with gratitude and say, teach me in this moment, what I need to know for my heart and soul. I think we constantly then move towards a peaceful end, because the end is coming. But we all want it to be in peace. We want it to be a good end. We don't know if it's today or tomorrow or in 30 years time. I have a friend who's elderly, elderly. Um, and this person is suffering a lot with a physical uh, challenge at the moment. And the doctors have said, there's really nothing. <laughs> it's, it, you have to adapt, you have to adjust, you have to learn to live with this because we've tried everything we can and it's a skin irritation. So you can imagine how awful that is. It's a 24 hour itch. It doesn't stop and it's been going for over a month now. All the antihistamines, all the steroid creams, everything can't stop it. And uh, this is, it's hard on anybody's emotional, I mean you can't sleep properly, so what have you, but we can see where there is an opportunity to achieve peace with it, to stop fighting it, and to learn to be with it. And so that, that's the next uh, part of the journey, I suppose, for this person. And there's a few of us 
walking alongside and supporting as this becomes something that is adjusted to. Because that's where wholeness and healing is. Is when there's peace on the inside, in the inner man, in the energetic field, in the emotional structure. And our expressions are no longer coming from that irritation. And we transcend it. Yeah. Well, I'll walk towards the ocean before I end off and trust that you have loved looking at this beauty. Uh, Colin and I have walked here and we always say, oh, we should do this more because you cannot tire of this landscape. So... Goodbye for today with lots of love and blessings. Might you find peace. Might you embrace challenge. Might you allow yourself to dig deep into yourself, to find out where the dark parts are, to expose them without shame, fear, guilt. Because there is nothing to be ashamed of. There is no reason to be afraid. There is every reason to find joy, to be grateful, to live with, uh, yeah, live well. Hope. It's hard at the moment to see hope because everything that comes through the TV, etc. is telling you there's no reason to hope. But uh, maybe switch the TV off. Maybe stop listening to the news. Maybe stop going on the certain channels that you go on if that brings a dis-ease to you turn it off Um, and be free be free with love and blessings bye